Welcome to another painting tutorial on how to paint Mephiston, the Lord of Death. For this tutorial, you will need Contrast Medium, Magos Purple, Flesh Terrors Red, Blood Angels Red, Gilliman Flesh, Eandon Yellow, Apothecary White, Skeleton Horde, Basilicanum Grey, Sigor Brown, Leviathan Blue, Black Templar, Talisar Blue, and Ethematic Blue. You will also require a pot of Screaming Skull, Flayed One Flesh, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Fire Dragon Bright, Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, Ulthuan Grey, Rust Grey, Fenrisian Grey, Retributor Armour, Liberator Gold, Grey Seer, Dawnstone and Baharoth Blue. So the first paint we're going to use is Blood Angels Red. And this is for all of his armour panels, so we just want to grow a little bit of this on our brush, not too much, and we just want to start coating it on, like so. Once that Blood Angel's Red is dry, the next colour we want to use is Flesh Terror's Red, and this is for all his skirts. So the first part of his robes. Now we want to do quite, we want these to be quite dark. So we just want to kind of start being quite thick with it and um, just start layering it over, over his robes. Once that flesh tear is red is dry, we're going to quickly do the cloak and this will be the three main areas with their first base coat on. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start with a nice, good, thick coat of Basilicanum Grey and then we're going to go over it with Black Templar. The reason we want to do the uh, Basilicanum Grey first is that it kind of gives, it, uh, gives the Black Templar a darker... Um, base to work off of once we once we once we once we put that on. So just gonna go all over the cloak with Basilicanum Grey. Don't need to be too neat here um, or too consistent. You just want to get Basilicanum Grey on there on there now. Once that Basilicanum dry grey is dry it's now time to start layering up the areas that we've already done. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the cloak. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some Saigor Brown and we're going to paint it into the recesses. And then, whilst the Saigor Brown is still wet, we're going to use some Flesh Terrors Red to kind of blend the two together to give it a really dark red look. So the first thing we do is we grab the Saigor Brown, like so. And then we just pick a recess, if we go with this one here, and we just Paint the Saigor Brown in like so. So that gives it a nice dark feel. But then what we're going to do is we grab a bit of Flesh Terror's Red and just where the Saigor Brown meets the red, we blend the two together. Like that. And grab a little bit more Flesh Terror's Red and just smooth it out. So go around all of the recesses and do this. And then we'll move on. Next up, we want to give the cloak an all over coat of Black Templar. We want to be really careful when we're going around the uh, the red cloak here. Um, so we just want to kind of grab a load of stuff, uh, a load of the Black Templar on our brush and start painting it on. And you'll see that the Black Templar, when you've got a good amount on your brush, it just flows over the Basilicanum Grey really nicely. Um, just get, making it extra dark, which is exactly what we want for his cape. So just be quite considered with how you're applying it, because you don't want it to be too thick, because you might start losing the losing the the recesses. So yeah, just go around and do the whole of the cape like this. 
Once that's dry, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start highlighting the uh, the skirt. So we're going to be using some thinned down, a little bit more than you would normally, um, Mephiston Red. And we're just going to go over all of the highlight, uh, kind of the raised parts of the cloak. So we're just going to run our brush very, very carefully, making sure we don't go in here where we've got the nice deep recess. I'm going to go around the whole of the, uh, the, the skirt area and do it like this. So with that Mephiston Red dry, we're now going to do a little highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. So we're going to fill it, thin it down once again, uh, but we want to do uh, a little bit more than we know normally because we're still kind of trying to get a nice smooth finish. And we're just going to go over all of those Mephiston Red highlights that we just made like this but we want to do much narrower than we did before. So we just want to be very careful and make it much more neater than we were perhaps before. Take your time. Like that. Still continuing with the Evil Sun Scarlet, once the robes are highlighted, now it's time to highlight all of the armor panels. And we just want to run this around each of the edges that we can find. So if we look at the foot, we can see just here, along the edge, this foot like that. And you just want to go around and do all of the raised edges like this. With that Evil Sun Scarlet applied to the armor, we're now going to use some Thin Down Wild Rider Red as our next highlight up. And so what we want to do is we want to, again, having thinned it down on, with, on our palette paper, we want to take the Wild Rider Red and we want to kind of just, we don't want to highlight the whole, the whole edge. We just want to kind of almost like where the light catches the most at the top, at the sharpest point. Just want to put a small line across most of it like that. And we want to go around and do this across all of the cloak. And I like that. As before, with the same Wild Rider Red, we are now going to highlight some of the armor. And we want to do this on the absolute kind of the hardest edges. So things like on the nipple here, And then areas like around his kind of neck, his, the, the, is it a van brace or something? I don't know. You want to kind of just, not all of it, you just want to kind of get that much. So go around and do all of the armor. With that Wild Rider Red applied, it's now time to do the final red highlight on both the armor and on the cloak. And this is going to be some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. Now, you do not need very much of this because all we're going to do is where you see the very tips of things, like here, you just want to do a little spot like that. Very very subtle just to see where the absolute tip of the cloak meets the light similarly on the uh, armor we just want to take a teeny tiny amount and on the very tips of things so at the very edge of the nipple like that and on his neck part, you just want to do the tiniest amount across the middle. Kind of like that. So go around and do all of the edges just like this. With the cloak and the armor dry, I think you can agree the model has taken a massive leap forward. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to move back on to the black cloak. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Dawnstone. 
uh, and then we're going to do something cool over the top of it. So what we're going to do with the thin down Dawnstone is we're just going to pick out, once we like we did with the red cloak, we're just going to pick out all of the highlights, all of the raised areas like this. Once those Dawnstone highlights are applied, we're now going to give it a four to one mix shade of Leviathan Blue and Contrast Medium. So we want to go all over the cape with this. And you just want to start over the highlights like this. Once that Leviathan Blue mix is dry, we're now going to highlight over the, uh, the kind of the, the Dawnstone where we went before. And for this, we're going to use a thin down bit of rust gray. So we just want to be very careful now. Um, and we just want to go over those same highlights, but at the top of them, of where, where we originally put the paint. So just want to kind of down the middle. Kind of like that. So go around and go over all of these highlights just like this. Once those rust gray highlights are finished, we're gonna finish off with some Fenrisian gray spot highlights. So we're just gonna have some thin down on our palette pad. And we're just gonna take a very small amount and we're just going to very finely add a line going down the center. So we're just going to go around and do this across all of the highlights. Like this. Now all of that's dry, what we're going to do is start working on the rest of the details. But first, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to clean up some of our mistakes. So what I've done is I've thinned down some grey seal with a bit of water. And I'm just going to go around and uh, fix all of the things where I've splodged a little bit of uh, Mephiston, not Mephiston, any of the red or the black on it. Um, so we're just going to go around and do this quickly before we move on and start finishing the rest of the model. Once that gray seal is dry, we're gonna start by painting in the rest of the details. And so we're gonna start with Black Templar. And this is gonna be things like the casing of the weapon and the gloves and the soft parts in the armor and his, arm, and his elbows uh, and things like this. So we're gonna just grab some on our brush and we're just gonna start painting this on. Once those black details are dry, we're going to paint the white details. And for this, we want to use apothecary white, and we just want to get a nice dollop on our brush and just paint it over. And this is going to be on things like these winged teardrops here and here. So just start slapping it on. And again, try to be careful around the places where you've painted red, because we don't want to slop any of this on there. Next up, we want to do the brown parts, and this is going to be things like the book, his belt that you can just see in there, and his holster, which is nestling away in there. And for this, we're going to use Saigor Brown, because it's a nice, deep, rich brown. And so we're just going to, on the book, for example, just give it a good covering, like so. Once those brown parts are dry, we're then going to start painting in all the gold details. And for this, we're going to use some thin down with a bit of water, Retributor Armour. And then we're just going to start picking out all the gold details that we see. And for these, this is going to be things like the teardrops, but also the banding around the inside of his armour. So if you look very carefully, 
and if you follow the box art you can pick this out quite easily you want to pick out these kinds of bits you just want to be very careful around here so as not to splodge on all that nice red that we've already done so we just carefully pick that out like that and for any teardrops we want to just do a nice coat of gold over the whole thing picking up both the edge which is the actual gold bit and the tear itself once those gold details are painted in we're going to start painting in the silver parts and for this we're going to be using some thin down iron warriors so we're just going to grab a little bit of this in our brush and then we're going to start brushing it on nice and smoothly onto places like the sword onto his his head headgear up here and the pipes running into the backpack on the back and obviously there's elements like the gun as well so just go around pick out all of these silver parts and then we'll move on with those silver parts painted the next thing we're going to do is paint in all of the bone and these are going to be these skulls here here and here and on the top of his headgear but we're also going to paint in the book pages of the book here and we're also going to paint his hair and to this we're going to use skeleton horde so we're just going to grab some on our small layer brush and we're just going to start painting it over all of the bone parts just like that so go around and do all of the bone parts once the skeleton hoard is dry, we're going to use some Yandan yellow, and this is going to be on these two cables here going down his front. So we're just going to grab a little bit on our, on our brush as per usual, and we're just going to paint it on. Easy peasy. Now remember, these cables fall around to the back, so don't forget to do the other half of it as well. So just go around and put Yandan yellow all over these cables. With that Yandin yellow applied, we're now going to apply some Talisar blue, and this is going to be to the plasma, but also to the little psychic nodules on the side of his head, just here. So we just want to grab a tiny little bit because we want to have quite controlled here, and we just want to start painting it in to where we want it. You just want to be very careful. particularly when doing his head. But if you do splodge it, particularly when you're doing his face, you can go back and neaten it up with some grace here. Once that Talisar blue is dried, we're nearly able to start doing some shading and highlighting, but first we're gonna add some Gilliman flesh to his face. So all we want to do is we want to be very, very careful here because Mephiston's quite pale, so we don't want to overwhelm the flesh. So we just want to be very careful with how we're applying Gilliman flesh. We don't want it to be too strong. So you just want to keep moving that contrast around so that we're getting the shade, but we're also crucially not overwhelming the model. With that Gilliman flesh now dry, we're going to start shading the model. And first thing, what we're going to do is we're going to be very careful with this. But what we're going to do is we're going to use Basilicanum Grey, and we're going to use that to shade all the silver and the gold parts. So what you want to do is you want to just be very, very, very gentle with it. And you want to watch for pooling here, but it works really nicely as a shade. So... We are just going to start painting it onto the model, but we're going to be quite sparing with it because we don't want to kind of have a full contrast effect. We do want to go over these blood drops as well. We just want to too much. Basically, just apply some some contrast color to these 
as we've already applied. It's kind of like when you're using a normal shade paint, but these just kind of retain the color that's underneath. So in the case of wear, where I've put a little bit too much on, we wash up our brush, we just use the brush to pull some of it off and just move it around a bit, like that. And once that's dry, you'll still see that silver thing coming through the middle and it'll look really nice, cool effect. Similarly on the gold, we don't want too much. You just wanna start gently applying it like so. And again, just watching for pooling on the flat surfaces and pulling it off with the brush if you have to. So go around and do all of the gold and all of the silver parts. With that basilicanum grey applied to all the metallics, you can see it's nicely darkened down and the model is starting to blend together. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to start doing some edge highlighting. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the white. So we're going to use some Ulthuan grey, thinned down with a bit of water and on our palette pad. And then we're just going to start running this along the edge of the wings. So we're just going to, like that, very carefully. So we're going to go around and do all of this across both of these winged teardrops. With those Ulthu and Grey highlights applied, it's now time to start highlighting the silver. And for this, we're going to be using Iron Hand Steel. So we're just going to thin some down on our palette. Then we're going to take it on our brush. And then we're just going to start highlighting all of the silver parts. And for this, you want to just grab all of the raised areas like that and areas like the center of the blade, for example. And yeah, you just want to go around and do all of these edge highlights. With those silver parts highlighted, it's now time to highlight the gold. And for this, we're going to be using Liberator Gold. So similarly to when we did the silver, we're just going to take a little bit on our brush and we're just going to start running our brush along all of the edges on all of the gold. Like that. With those gold highlights applied, as you can see, we're very, very near the end. So the next thing we're gonna do is gonna highlight his face. And for this, we're gonna use some thin down flayed one flesh. We wanna be really careful here. We just want to highlight the raised areas of his face, like his brow and along the nose, like so. So go around and do all of the edges, like his cheekbones and the wrinkles on his forehead. And then we're nearly there. With those highlights applied, the next thing we're gonna apply is some Screaming Skull. And this is gonna be as highlights on the, uh, on the hair, on the sharpest parts of the bone color and also we're going to try and do a little bit of dot of screaming skull just in here for the eyes. So we're going to start with a little bit of thin down screaming skull on our palette. You can take a little bit on our brush and we're just going to start hitting the sharpest parts of the hair. We don't want to get all of it because we want to create some contrast within. We just want to do kind of like that sort of thing. With that Screaming Skull applied, we're now going to add some Flesh Terrors Red, and this is gonna be on all of the gems and blood vials that we see all around the model. So we're just gonna grab a little bit, and for things like the blood vials, what we wanna do is we kind of wanna just 
start with a line like that. It goes all the way up to the top because we want to keep an area like that, which we're going to fill in with black. And then we just want to fill in the rest, the rest of the blood vial. The things like the gems, we just want to take a little bit of Flesh Terra's Red and we just want to start at the very top of the gem and just work our way down like that over the gold. So we want to go around and do this for all of the gems and blood vials. Once that Flesh Terra's Red is dry on the blood vials, we want to be very careful and just take a little bit of Black Templar and just fill in the space that we left by drawing that line. So we just want to kind of very carefully try to avoid getting any on the gold and getting any on the red that we've just left. So we just want to take our time. Once that black Templar is dry, we're going to start highlighting the gems and the blood vials. And for this, we're going to use some thinned down Evil Sun Scarlet. So we're just going to take a little bit on our brush. And so for the blood gems, like the teardrop on here on his on his on his waist, we just want to kind of create a semicircle that comes up like that at the bottom of the gem. Whereas on the blood vase, we want to go as close as we can to that line we've created next to the Black Templar. And we just want to draw a very straight line where the two colours meet. Like that. Once that evil sun skylight is dry, we're going to take some thin down fire dragon bright, and this is just going to finish off all of those gems and blood vials. So we just really want a tiny, tiny bit on our brush. And for these gems, we just want to draw a little highlight around the bottom of the gem. Like that. On the blood vials, we just want to take a little bit of the same line that we've drawn. We just want to do a tiny, tiny amount. Like that. So go around and finish all of these gems and blood vials in the same way. Once those highlights are applied to the gems, we're now going to start doing the psychic -y bits. And these are going to be the nodules on the side of his head, but we're also going to do the plasma coils here. And for this, we're just going to use a very simple highlight of Baharoth blue. So we just want a little bit on our brush. And on the nodules on his head, we just want to, on the top of it there, draw a little line. like so. And for the plasma coils, we want to, across the kind of top corner of them, run a little highlight. Like so. Across the top of the plasma coil as well. And again on the other side. And with that Baharoth blue now applied, just to finish off the psychic bits and the plasma coils, we want to use a dot and a highlight of Althuan grey. So we just want to take just the tiniest amount that we can and we just want to put a dot in the center like so. On the plasma coils, we just want to use a bit 
at the very top corner. Like that. With those psychic nodules done and the plasma coils finished, we're now gonna do his eyes. And for this, it's very simple. We just need a bit of ethermatic blue. We don't want very much. We'd rather start with little and build it up. So what we wanna do is we just wanna get a little bit on the tip of our brush and start painting it across the eye. And this is to give us that psychic glow around his eyes. <laughs> We want to try and catch the bottom lid as well as go over that dot that we painted of Screaming Skull. And just keep building it up until you get a blue hue that you're happy with. Like that. Once you're happy with the eyes looking nice and glowy like they do there, um, we're going to just finish off the face and we're going to do a little tiny bit of Magos purple. And this is going to be for his tongue. So we just want to take some on our brush, as per usual, not very much. We want to very delicately take your time and make sure you don't get this wrong. In between the teeth like that. And again, build it up until it's as dark as you want it to be. I'm going to be very happy with it just like that. Okay, so last but not least, we're going to start painting the lightning uh, energy effect on his sword. And for this, we're going to use a roughly five to one mix of Talisar Blue and Contrast Medium. And then if we need to, we're going to blend out the Talisar Blue with some Basilicanum Grey to keep that darkness on the sword. So we're going to take the mix of the sword energy blue thing on our brush and just around the nodules here we're just going to start painting it on roughly as far up and as far down as we want it to go. like that. Then we're going to take a little bit of Basilicanum Grey, not too much, and just at the edge here we're going to blend it in like that. And similarly again, just a tiny bit. We're going to Blend it in like that. A little bit more Talisar Blue back up here. A little bit more just to make it a little bit more blue here. that sort of effect. Once that blend is dry, we then want to start taking again another similar type of mixed mix and um, applying it a little bit closer just to give us much more of a blue hue around closest part of the energy. Like that. Once that's dry, you can see we've got this nice subtle blue effect at the top of the sword. So what we're going to start doing is painting in the uh, highlights in order to kind of brighten it right back up again. So for this we're going to use Baharoth Blue. We're just going to take a little bit 
and we're going to do things like on the energy nodules, we're just going to point around the tip of the energy nodule. Like that. And like that. And next, we're going to start painting in the lightning itself. So we're just going to take a tiny little bit, and just very carefully, we're just going to paint some lightning coming off. From starting from towards these lightning nodules. So you just want to almost like a random pattern, you start painting it on like that. Once those Baharoth blue lines are drawn in and they're nice and dry, we're gonna take a little bit of old Thuan Grey and we're gonna highlight where we've placed them. So around the very tip, again, of the lightning module. And then wherever these lightning strikes kind of have a sharp edge, kind of like there, and there. And then lastly, once all that Ulthuan grey is dry, we want to take some ethermatic blue and we just want to paint this over the whole area. So we just want to kind of, just to bring it all together and kind of reinforce. Like that. Next up, we're going to start painting in the base, and this is really the last stage. And for this, we're going to use Basilicanum Grey. And you'll be pleased to hear we're done with teeny tiny detail, so we're just going to start throwing this on nice and simple, like that. Whilst that Basilicanum is still drying, you can actually just take some little bits of a uh, skeleton hoard and just kind of like add it into the mix just to kind of create that kind of uh, variation in stone that you'll often see in real life. Um, always make sure you wash your brush off as you as you go. You don't want to contaminate your part, your paints. You can just, for example, like that and just kind of create some variation and some color on the stone, like so. Next up, we're gonna paint in all the metallic parts on the base with some Iron Warriors. Once that Iron Warriors is dry, we're going to shade it in with some Basilicanum Grey just to blend it with the rest of the base. Once that's all dry, the last thing we're gonna do is give a dry brush of Screaming Skull all over the base. This is just very simple, very nice light dry brush, like this. We're going to do this all over the, the parts we gave a little bit of skeleton hoard to, as well as all the metallic parts and all of the basilicanum grey parts. And this will just tie the whole thing together and give it a nice highlight. And then the very last thing to do, will be to finish off the rest of the base and paint the rim whatever colour that matches the rest of your army.
As you can see, I've painted the rim of the base black and I finished off the rest of the basing scheme. And uh, with that, the miniature is now finished. Um, I hope you like this one as much as I've enjoyed painting it and filming it for you guys. Uh, this has been an absolute dream of a model and I couldn't have asked for anything better from Games Workshop. Um, yeah, I mean, just look at him. Mephiston, the Lord of Death himself. Um, yeah, there's nothing else to say, I guess, other than uh, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you so much for all your support. It's really appreciated. And I hope you find this uh, this video helpful. Um, and really, it kind of shows off what contrast is capable of. Um, yeah, cool. I'll see you in the next one.